We are at the Old Fitz in Woolloomooloo. And we are beginning our third week of rehearsals for a Theatre of the Absurd play. And we are doing... The Chairs. Originally, it's about an old man and an old woman in a lighthouse. They're playing games to stave off the horror of what has happened to their world. And at the end of this game today, the question is, what will be the point of their lives? It's an absurdist piece, so it's really challenging, I won't lie. It's not an easy role for either one of us. No. The contradiction in the words is just mind-bending. Simply trying to remember the dialogue has been um, lots of fun. There's nothing in the play that requires it to be an old man and an old woman. There's nothing about sexuality in the play that demands that. There are two people with a shared life and a shared destiny. So it's not difficult to make it gender non-specific. Casting Iota and Paul just seemed like the most daring, thrilling idea. My heart bleeds for you. <laughs> mummy? Huh? Where's my mummy? Mm -hmm. No more mummy. <laughs> I'm your mummy now. For me, it's quite different to what I've done before, but it's also, it's in both of our wheelhouses. Not true. I'm a little lost orphan. <laughs> It gives us an opportunity to actually do some proper acting. But it's a vocal performance. Even though there's not singing, it's very heavily vocal because there's so much to say and there's a lot of yelling and speaking and poetry that it feels like I've sung a, you know, for a couple of hours every day, you know, when I get home. It's being rebellious in a way by having us do it. And it's very much of now, which is what I find astounding. The Chairs by Ionesco was written in 1950, first performed in 1952, written in French. He was a writer of a theatre who was trying to break the mould of what theatre is and also in response to what he experienced with uh, the, the Second World War. There were a group of intellectuals and poets, writers, who were totally shocked by what they witnessed. And it caused them to ask questions. If we are capable of such destruction, what are we? They became a group of writers, unconsciously, they didn't even necessarily know each other, but they wrote plays that dealt with the existential crisis of who are we, what is life about? Do we leave any legacy? Do we learn from the past? And this play feels like it's some kind of statement on it. It's very subtle though, it's not obvious. Is it? Would no. you say so? That's a good answer, that was a good answer. Was it? Mm. Great. They talk about the water is rising. How contemporary is this play? They're isolated. They haven't had a visitor for 40 years. Yeah, right. It's obviously the end of the world. I mean, there's a real dark side to this, but there's extreme. That's where the absurdity comes, because I think Ionesco talks about tragedy is fate, but comedy is dealing with all our fates, you know, and the, and the big world, and the world that we try to survive in every day. Everything's in tatters, <laughs> titters and tatters. And when you're doing Inesco's play, he has something to say about the world in 1950, which is just as relevant today when we are perched on potential disaster and we live in an uneasy world where things have become absurd. Exactly, as a man, as a prophet, as a master among men. I'm not like other people. I have ideals. You're right. Maybe I do have gifts and talent, just not the skills to apply them. The experience for the audience in absurd theatre is really interesting because Absurdist theatre often has no narrative. No A leads to B, leads to C, leads to D. A simple story that you can follow. Absurdist theatre tends to deal with situations, puts people in situations and asks them to cope. Little soldier, 
Wipe your eyes. <laughs> your guests are coming tonight. I liken it to a big dipper ride. Strap yourselves in. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Thanks to you and the orator. It's like the carriage starts at the beginning of the play and you can feel the chair going up, up, up the rails. And you think, oh my God. And then all of a sudden, off we go on the Big Dipper ride. I have a message, a mission. That's and the audience are required to keep up and to enjoy and sometimes to accept that it doesn't make sense. I'm quite confident that what they see, they're gonna, gonna love. I know I'd love it. If I was to come and see it, I'd be quite envious of the actors that were in it because you get to do everything, you know. It's a real stretch. Oh, yeah, it sure is. It's not a difficult experience for the audience. It's an easy experience. But it's a thrilling one because they are being taken on a journey into the unknown. They don't know where they're going next. Where was that village? Do you remember? It was a place, I believe, called Paris. <laughs>